It's time now to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is serverless computing and a welcome addition to the Microsoft certifications. For one, what is serverless computing? Well, it's an answer to many people don't want to spend all their time managing infrastructure, managing servers, all those things. They want to spend their time building great applications. And serverless computing essentially allows us to do that. It's the abstraction of servers, infrastructure, and operating systems, and just takes that whole pain away completely for you. The way it works is it provides you with fully managed services, and you'll see the major three that Azure provides. You only pay for what you use, so it's very, very cost effective, very easy to scale as well, because you're only paying when you use those functions or those logic apps or, or the event grid, as you'll see coming up. And finally, it's the ability to stitch together applications and services seamlessly is what makes it so, so powerful. Um, so just a great, great service in general. But something to keep in mind, there is a server running somewhere. Ultimately, you write the code or you create the logic app or you work with the event grid. But you know Microsoft has to execute that somewhere. It's going to take that service that you've written and run it on some compute somewhere. Uh, now, there's three major computing services that you heard me kind of mention. Azure Functions, so these allow you to write different pieces of code in a lot of the common programming languages that get executed somewhere. Logic apps, which essentially are workflow engines, more of an orchestration type activity, more of a you know if this then that type option. If you've seen that on the internet. Uh, and then event grid is feel just kind of you know we have multiple triggers, multiple events going on. How do we you know react to these events and and fire off you know the appropriate services in response? So all three of these work really really well together. If we start with Azure Functions though, a number of key features for one supports the following programming languages: C sharp, F sharp, JavaScript, and Java is now in preview. So you may not get asked that on the exam, uh, but just so you know for the future. Pay per use pricing is a key feature of you know all serverless functions really, but in particular for Azure Functions is a great thing, uh, and it can be used in two ways. One is part of a consumption plan or an app service plan. So you know an app service plan, as you'll learn about if you cover in app services, you know is where you can put web apps and other apps on the same uh, compute infrastructure that you have a plan for. So you can combine your Azure Functions there. So instead of you you know going pay per use in the consumption plan, you can just use them as part of your app service plan itself. And more on that later on. It does have integrated security with major OAuth providers, Azure AD, Facebook, etc. And you can code in the portal or deploy via your standard DevOps tools. Now, Logic Apps, on the flip side, a little bit different. They're essentially a workflow engine. You know, they used to orchestrate and stitch together functions and services just like regular orchestrations tools. If you've used ServiceNow Orchestrator or VMware Orchestrator, you'll probably be quite familiar with things like this, or even System Center Orchestrator if you've used that in the Windows world. Uh, it's the ability to visualize, design, build, automate. So think of that a little bit different. Azure Functions is all about taking our code, uh, putting that together, you know, maybe connecting it to other systems, making calls, etc. But we, we write the whole code out. Uh, Logic Apps is more about this visual orchestration engine that you have there and supports a lot of different services, not just Microsoft services, as you'll see in the demos. In addition, there's some key constructs to understand. Yeah, you have the concept of triggers and actions. And you'll see this throughout uh, Event Grid as well. The concept is, you know, we have a trigger, something that happens that we want to react to, and then that fires off the action. So think about this whenever you're doing logic apps. What do I care about that happens? And then do I want to send an email? Do I want to send a you know a REST call? Do I want to you know start a function? Do I want to connect to Dropbox or some other service out there? That's the general concept with logic apps.